How's it guys? This is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video we're going to be looking at the Game Week 12 team selection as well as taking a look at how the squad got on in Game Week 11. The transfer plan is going to be set out with potential transfers and moves that we're looking at before the final team selection going into that Game Week 12 including our captaincy. So that's something you're interested in. Sit back, relax and let's get into it. So a new season calls for a new sponsor but here on the Davey FPL channel we like our old. Uh, so I've brought back the old sponsor, OneFootball, but with a completely new revamped app. Uh, yes, OneFootball has gone over a complete marketing revamp, new logo, new everything. Uh, I've checked it out. It looks really good. They kind of took the old app, but just made it better. Um, so I'm really appreciative of that. If you want to go check them out, link down in the description below to go download the app. If you don't know who they are, they're the biggest app on iOS and Android. So go check them out. I personally use them so I can recommend them from a personal level. So disclaimer before we go into the game week 11 team review i'm having to record this video on sunday afternoon so not all the fixtures have actually taken place currently while i'm recording this is the leicester versus sheffield united game and the reason why i'm having to do this is i am away on holiday this week but i still wanted to get the the team selection and the game week previews out for you guys so that you're not left in the dark so just be patient with me on this one i know the information might not be as updated as possible but i will always update you uh, in the next week's videos on terms of game week rank and overall rank so the game week rank is actually a lot better than it's probably going to be. I'm expecting some regression down there. Uh, probably going to be around that 2 million mark. But 69 points currently um, with a minus 4 taken. So the transfers done this week. We brought Diego Jota in for Podence. And then we also did the Raul Jimenez move to Bamford. So we kind of got rid of all the Wolves players in our team. Uh, with the whole Bamford situation, that move looks like it paid off. However, with the Diego Jota situation, as of recording this video, apparently Diego Jota is going to be benched. That's kind of the rumor around it so hopefully it can come off the bench and do well uh, at at least better than potents that will kind of uh, make that minus four hit a lot better so as i said 69 points uh, which was a massive green arrow it almost halved our rank from 3 million and we're currently sitting about that 1.7 million mark however as i said recording this video a little bit earlier um so i do expect this to change and i'm pretty sure that we will at least get a green arrow hopefully uh, but it's been a really good game week and uh, finally we've had the game week that's really boosted us up the ranks and hopefully the next game week is just just as good so starting off in goal nothing much to talk about there martinez and steer with that postponed fixture and wasn't really keen on taking martinez out for another keeper as i thought that the fixtures coming up for aston villa are still looking good i think if you brought in meslia that that transfer doesn't look that bad however if you brought in johnston unfortunately that move looks quite bad after them getting thrashed by crystal palace 5-1 so it's just yet to be seen whether that uh, patience is going to be paid off for martinez uh, with those lovely fixtures coming up i'm hoping for a couple clean sheets uh, but i am kind of happy that i didn't take him out at least when I've been looking at the results that have happened over this weekend. So starting off in the defense, we have Cancelo there with six points, which is a little bit of a surprise that he managed to start. He actually started in the place of Kyle Walker. And I mean, in the deadline stream, I was saying how Kyle Walker is probably the most definite starter for that Man City defense and who I would bring in. Uh, so I got really lucky there with just keeping Cancelo, hoping for the best. Um, didn't get any attacking returns. The game was actually quite low scoring. I thought that Man City would score more than two goals, uh, but 2-0 was the final result. But I'll take the clean sheet there because I wasn't even expecting Cancelo to start. Then we move on to Chilwell. I wasn't really that mad with Chilwell losing the clean sheet because I did own Bamford and a lot of people have actually tripled up or even doubled up on that Chelsea defense so maybe uh, their clean sheet loss was a little bit more of an advantage. We still have Kyle Walker-Peters that is playing tomorrow night which is Monday night so hopefully he manages to keep a clean sheet in that one but kind of any points help at this stage. Uh, Diego Jota we've spoken about still is playing um, Wolves tonight and uh, I'm expecting him to come off the bench as the rumor is that he's going to be benched and hopefully he can do some goods there. But the Diego Jota transfer was more for next game week. And I'll talk about that in the game week 12 a preview. Fernandez with six points. Didn't start the game. Actually, someone in my deadline stream said that he expected Fernandez to be benched. And it actually made quite a lot of sense with that whole Manchester United game against RB Leipzig in the Champions League. Um, so he managed to come on and got an assist. He actually uh, managed to create eight chances, which I think was a, a record in the Premier League in only a half of play, which just shows how quality and how well Bruno Fernandes is actually playing this season. Then we move on to the sweet spot of the team, 
Sterling and Kevin De Bruyne are returning 14 points and 13 points. So luckily a captain Kevin De Bruyne as he was the one with the more points, uh, 14 double to 28. But then also Sterling. So Sterling started, scored and got an assist. This was a penalty win, which I was really happy about, uh, but just really happy that I managed to keep him in a game week that it really mattered because 13 points is a massive haul. It actually makes things a little bit tougher on the transfer plan, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I was just happy to get those 13 points. And then going on to the striking department, I started Ollie Watkins with the hope that maybe the game was uh, rescheduled to midweek and they counted it in game week 11. Uh, but Charlie Taylor is simply going to come on for him with his two points. And then we have Calvert Lewin and Bamford who both scored a goal. Uh, Calvert Lewin and Bamford showing how consistent they are and are really happy to own both of them. I know DCL's fixtures are a little bit tougher coming up, but Bamford's are definitely easier and uh, a goal against Chelsea I'll always take. Then we have Pursuma on the bench. I don't think he's going to have to come on. And then Ferguson who's back in training, but I don't think it's going to be any heavy training at the moment. So I'm just happy that he's on the training pitch doing some light training and hopefully he comes back soon enough so going on to the transfer plans and kind of the predicament i'm in at the moment was before i went into game week 11 the proposed move was sterling to salah i have the exact money to do it as of recording this video and salah is expected to go up so maybe on my twitter page i've already updated this move but i wanted to do sterling to salah as i think that salah is the best captaincy option going into game week 12 with that fulham away fixture i'm expecting liverpool to play a really weak side in the champions league as they've really qualified as top of the group so I'm expecting Salah to get a nice break from that and he should be raring to go against Fulham and hopefully a nice haul comes about in that game so that was my expected move but after Sterling's mini haul against Fulham I'm actually a little bit unsure because Man City in game week 13 host West Bromwich Albion at the Etihad and I think it's going to be another a game week for goals for Man City and hopefully Sterling uh, starts that one but what I could do actually is bring in Salah for this game week captain him then take him out for Sterling next game week in game week 13 but I think that might be a little bit of a ridiculous use of of free transfers but that is something that's on my mind so as of recording this video i might have already updated this when you're watching so just keep your eyes on my twitter at davyfpl for future moves the other move that i could do as a potential one week punt inverted commas is ollie watkins out or i could do culvert lewin out for callum wilson so callum wilson has a nice fixture against west bromwich albion at home in the game week 12 preview we even spoke about him as a potential captaincy option if you want to go for a nice safe differential as i'm really expecting newcastle to do well in that that is saying that their game week 12 fixture is going to go ahead which it could be postponed again uh, but these are the current moves there's a lot up in there unfortunately i'm recording this video early so not much concrete news is in my head uh, but hopefully i've updated you guys over on my twitter otherwise i haven't made any moves and you don't have to worry at all so going on to the Game Week 12 team with no transfers, this is the expected lineup that I go through. I won't go through every position, I might just talk about the teams and the captaincy, uh, but starting off with the Aston Villa game, it is a tough game against Wolves. I'm not expecting much, so maybe a Martinez clean sheet or an Oli Watkins goal would be quite nice. Uh, Wolves have been playing quite well, not from an attacking point of view, but more from a defensive point of view, uh, so I think it's going to be quite a close game, and basically any points out of it are going to be quite welcomed. Uh, Manchester United versus Man City, now this game could go either way, United United usually uh, perform a lot better against the stronger opposition so I'm expecting quite a closer game in this one uh, but Man City haven't really been destroying teams except for Burnley so I don't expect a high scoring game from Man City which worries me a bit with Sterling and De Bruyne as I've doubled up kind of on that Man City attack and they're hogging a lot of the budget which is why I might just shift to that Salah transfer uh, depending on the whole situation I mean if Salah plays tonight against Wolves and does well I think that's almost a definite transfer in but if he doesn't I might just hold on to Sterling for that game week third fixture but with this game it's really too tight to call I reckon Man City win but it could always be a United win as they are really the surprise package I am still expecting Bruno Fernandes to do quite well because he is a really consistent player this season and is having a great season at the moment so if you want to look maybe for more differential captain you could look at Bruno Fernandes but I'm probably going to stick with my Liverpool asset and my Liverpool asset at the moment is Diego Jota um, so he's going to be my captain if Jota is benched against Wolves it actually uh, includes some nice talking points there because if he is benched that kind of is his rest so surely he starts against Fulham and then he's basically a good captaincy option because I think right now in that front four of Liverpool Diego Jota is definitely the best on form player out of them uh, and I'm perfectly fine captaining him if I don't own Salah if I do own Salah I think I'll captain him rather as he's just more of a consistent assured option especially with those penalties 
But with James Milner out, maybe he comes back for that game against Fulham, then maybe he will be on penalties and then make Salah a little bit less of an enticing option. The striking department has some tough fixtures with Oli Watkins, as I've already mentioned, and then Colvard Lewin against Chelsea. Uh, this is going to be a tough game for them, owning Chilwell and Colvard Lewin. Uh, basically, if one of them returns, I'll be pretty happy. And then with Patrick Bamford, plays that Friday night game, so hopefully he can do well in that one on prime time TV. Walker Peters, the final inclusion, Sheffield United should be uh, an easy clean sheet for them. I know touch wood there, I'm probably jinxing it, but with Sheffield United's attacking play not being at their peak, I reckon Southampton could get something out of this game. On the bench, we have Taylor against Arsenal, and now Arsenal, although they haven't been good from an attacking point of view, still not really confident playing him. What I might do is bench Cancelo and play Taylor, which might actually happen anyway if Cancelo gets benched, and Basuma against Leicester, not much to talk about there, and including Ferguson. So this is basically going to wrap up the video guys, hopefully you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like it if you did, and subscribe if you new have not subscribed yet. I'll be checking you guys on my Twitter page, at DaveyFPL, for the final team selection going to that Friday night deadline. I'm going to be signing off, it's been DaveyFPL, and I'm out, cheers, bye.